So, I want to talk about one more thing. I don't know how much time we have left, but uh, we'll work on this one. In 1984, this was before, obviously, I went to England in 1986. This was when I was still working in the uh, electronics company. And uh, in 1984, we were going down to our Phoenix, Arizona from Portland, Oregon for our daughter's wedding, our number two daughter. And uh, I had driven uh, from 1015 that night, Portland, all the way up toward uh, past Salem and uh, toward Eugene. You take a cutoff and you go up over Willamette Pass and you head toward Kalamath Falls. And uh, so we had put the children in, already had them in pajamas and all and everything. and. Uh, we head up over Willamette, Paul, Kalamath, uh, Willamette, up over Willamette Pass and uh, down through past Chimalt, uh, Oregon, and Kalamath Falls. I gas up there, tanked up with gas there. And uh, by then it is probably about five in the morning. And uh, I'm heading on out of Klamath Falls on uh, 95 or 395, whichever it is in there down towards Susanville, California. And uh, as the sun is about ready to come up, I begin to get the nods. Well, my wife and I and eight of our children are in that van, and I don't want to fall asleep at the wheels. So I finally pull over and told my wife, woke her up. She was sleeping in the one seat behind us. We were in a Volkswagen van, and that was a full seat, and the seat up front was a full seat, and then we had a full seat in the back. And we had four little ones in the very back hatch. And up on the roof, we had a car top carrier, a special one made of metal bars that had been special made for the top of that Volkswagen van. Uh, we had all of our luggage, 10 people's luggage. And uh, so I had her drive and said, uh, just, just drive for an hour and uh, I'll be good. All I need is an hour's sleep and I'll be good for another four hours or so then. Well, she didn't wake me up after an hour. I think she drove for almost two hours. And as she was driving, uh, our oldest daughter, before I left, Father's Day would be coming. And that was the morning of Father's Day. Uh, our oldest daughter, Ellen, had given me a cassette tape just come out by the Gaithers, Bill and Gloria Gaither, called Fully Alive. And so uh, I had been listening to that. I had plugged into my dashboard headphones that I had rigged up into my van so I could listen on headphones as I drove. And uh, so I had plugged in and all night long I had been, been singing quietly or humming quietly along with Fully Alive in the Spirit. And then the next song was Then Came the Morning. I never realized how prophetic that song was. Fully alive in the spirit, you know. <laughs> Fully alive. And uh, then the next morning, uh, I had gotten sleepy that morning, and I turned the, the wheel over to my wife and uh, said, listen to this song. And so she was listening to it and humming away while I was crawled in the back seat right behind her there and went to sleep. And... Uh, all of a sudden, I hear my wife crying, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and the man is something is, is leaning dangerously, and something is banging the floorboard terribly. And I set up, which would be the rider's side, right along the side, because it was leaning this way, I set up leaning against the door. In time to see this big boulder, we're coming at this big boulder, we're off the road, and she's trying to get the wheels back on the road. What had happened, our son David had kicked in his sleep up in the front seat, kicked into the wires of the headphone set, and kind of pulled her head sideways instead of just pulling the headphone set off and waiting till she could stop and untangle it from the emergency brake, his foot, and the gear shift. She's trying to do it while she's driving and she goes off the road. That's how we went off the road. And leaning dangerously. I no more than sit up, see this big boulder coming at us, 
And all of a sudden, a chunk of that asphalt that was coming off the side of the road as she was cutting up onto the edge from the shoulder, trying to get up back up on the road, chunks of asphalt were breaking off from the freeze of the winter before. And it was hitting the bottom of the van. A chunk of that caught and spun the wheel out of her hand, sending us on two wheels careening across the highway throwing her, who was not buckled in, over against our son David, throwing me hard against the, the, the side of the van. And uh, she's over there, and she regains, trying to reach up, she grabs the top of the steering wheel to get behind the wheel again to try to get that van to come down off of two wheels. Well, what happens when you grab the top of the wheel and you want to turn the rubber into the road? It crimped that tire of the van leaning and it made the van do a spiral and come upside down backwards down the highway. We did a flip in the air backwards down the highway, blew the back hatch open, blew the windshield out, 10 people's luggage come crushing the roof in. The corner bar of the car top carrier came through. My head was back. The bar came through the roof into my head. I didn't last, but I don't know, you don't look at a clock at times like that, you don't even think of it, but all I remember was pain shot down to my foot and started back up my leg, and I left the van. I was heading away from the accident, I could hear the accident going on, but I had no pain whatsoever, which I was very thankful for because the pain was excruciating. Our 15-year-old daughter said she was sitting behind me. She said she saw me pushing on the roof right here. So the had to have driven my head back into my shoulders. She said she didn't even realize we were upside down. She looked out the window and thought it was clouds she was looking at going by and realized it's the white line. We're upside down. She looked at her two brothers who none of the, those three were buckled in, not one was falling on the roof. She looked back at the four little ones in the back. One of them had hold of the back seat and was looking with big eyes ahead, but the other three were laying on their pillows, still laying on their pillows, not falling on the roof. It's a miracle. The witnesses, of which I have a signed full statement of and 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 uh, witnesses of the witnesses signed it. Three different people signed that they they wrote this. Uh, stated that the van was getting upside down backwards down the highway. They saw the four children upside down, but they were not falling on the roof. That, that was something else for them. Then the van skidded slowly to the other side of the road, turning kind of sideways, hit a big boulder, flipped in the air, they all said it flipped in the air and it come down like a feather in slow motion on all four wheels and stopped. Didn't go on down the grade. If it would have went on down the grade, it, they said it would have it, it would have just disintegrated. We'd all instantly been killed. At that point that it stopped, they say, I forced the sliding door open. Our son David crawled out where the windshield was in the front, through the windshield. He couldn't get the door open. It was jammed. The mirror was jammed against and shattered and all the doorknob and everything. Somehow my door opened. They said I got out and I fell down. David got out where the windshield was, come around, and he looked up at me and a 10-year-old boy, what would you think would be if he said it this way? Dad, I looked up into your face. Your eyes went back, you weren't there, and you just fell like a tree backwards and you didn't try to catch yourself. Then people were feeling your neck and they were 